DJ Robbie back at it again, giving you guys the weekend sensations. Today we're going to be talking about legacy support, and just how it kind of feels like certain characters get the shaft, honestly. Uh, a couple, <laughs> actually a couple uh, points to uh, clear up here on the side. The one guy always commenting on these videos being like, Robbie, you need to lose weight. I know you're going to get food right now while filming these. I don't want you to die early. Actually, I'm going to locals right now to pick up video files. Uh, contrary to popular belief, my locals is a restaurant as well. But there is a reason for this content. It is uh, basically killing time. And uh, number two, I guess Radio Robbie's going to be a thing on the weekends now. Kind of just film these a little bit in advance and use them. So anyway, legacy support. What is up with little Yugi here? All right, so we've gotten this infinite queue of uh, blue eyes, black wings, and photon support as of late, which I, I don't mind. Actually, I'm perfectly a-okay with this. Uh, everybody loves blue eyes. Everybody loves, well, black wings. And just, I don't know what's going on with photons, but I'm sure somebody out there loves photons. But when you, when you look at legacy support, uh, it tends to be some culmination of multiple things uh, from the community or just Konami got some new ideas. Uh, let's be real though, these sets that they make OG support for these older archetypes, like do you know how much Blue Eyes generates in annual sales revenue when they make a bunch of new cards for it? It's like fucking printing free money, I feel. And Konami doesn't have any real reason not to, you know, be printing free money for themselves, <laughs> you know. One of the easiest ways to make money is, well, everything named Blue Eyes White Dragon. I guess Black Wings still seem like they print money too, but when you look at the way that everything goes, obviously, for whatever reason, Dark Magician kind of feels like he gets to the wayside, and this was the point I made with like little Yugi here. So obviously Blue Eyes is by far been the best competitive deck. Dark Magician had a chance, uh, you know, his, his armament of support was relatively well received, um, but to the most part, it just kind of fell to the wayside because of, oh, well, Magician's not being that good. And then, it's just that. And then, you come to Little Yugi. Now, if you guys remember Little Yugi in the anime, uh, Yugi's deck against the Pharaoh, albeit it was much later, you know, he had, Gr what was it, Gradora? Grandora? Um, in addition to his old armament of the gadgets, and basically just anti-magician stuff. He was kind of like the, the inner child uh, type of player. And granted, Yugi and the Pharaoh are two different players. But in in hindsight, though, it's just, it seems like Yugi's deck didn't have much of an archetype going for it. It was just kind of more spread out over time. But... When it comes to support outside of, like, the movie and things like that, Little Yugi just doesn't tend to get a lot of legacy support. It's uh, rather annoying. I mean, Gold and Silver Gadget made me happy. But, to the most part, Yugi doesn't really have an archetype, so he can't really get much support. You know, Robbie, well, the gadgets are an archetype. <laughs> well, you know, many would disagree with you, voice of reason. So that was my first thought, was, where the fuck's my Little Yugi duels pack? with a bunch of brand new cards, because I want that. Number two, I want to talk about Dark Magician getting the shaft as well. I'm sorry, this is not a uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon support group, or support uh, <laughs> music live stream, whatever the hell. We're not, we're not against Blue Eyes here, it's just, I think Blue Eyes got enough cards. You know, I get... I get that the designer of Yu-Gi-Oh! Takahashi, or whoever it is, might have a thing for specifically shitting out new Dark Magician cards all the time, or coming up with new concepts for them to use. I could get that as to why there might be a possible delay in releasing a new support for Dark Magician. But is there some or coalition, coalition, yeah, to why Blue Eyes gets 95% more support than fucking Dark Magician does? Because you can tell, Blue Eyes definitely has everything going here. You know, where's my, where's my Dark Eyes alternative magician that I can reveal a Dark Magician to my hand so I can summon, when it dies, I can switch summon a Dark Magician or some shit. Like, hello? 
know, you, you need to do something like that, Konami, for magicians. Because the way that you pushed fucking Blue Eyes Alternative from the movie, that card was amazing. You know, I know it was designed specifically for the movie, but damn, yo, that was the perfect example of a competitive card that just turned out beautifully. But there needs to be an upgraded version of Dark Magician. I know everybody loves Dark Magician Girl, Dark Magician. But if Dark Magician doesn't get an upgraded form of himself to the extent in which Dark or uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon and Alternative work together, then I don't see there being a way for that art alternative to work. Get it? Get it? But I get Yugi is the cover of Yu-Gi-Oh. It's he's obviously the, the best part about this and for some reason if printing more blue eyes cards is the best method to continue to print money for the company well unfortunately dark magician players like myself who enjoy the deck we're gonna suffer and it's gonna continue to suck so there's that side note so remember two two major points here why where the fuck my little yugi support at number two why is dark magician always getting the shaft over fucking blue eyes white dragon I'm sure a lot of people will feel that. Now, on to the third point here. These sets genuinely, well, they, they tend to be designed towards the more casual player. You look at cards like the Roids we got ages ago in the Duelist Pack, that shit had a couple of interesting points in it, albeit, you know, it wasn't hot fucking fire. But there were some interesting things that the set had going for it. You know, being able to drop a very large beater on the table, being able to fusion summon. You know, it, it kind of tried to alleviate some of the problems that I see here. And that's one of the things I will give the, these duelist packs. Um, Konami likes to go back and give more support to shit like Cyber Darks, for example. The fact that, uh, we just get that nice continued layer of support. It, it's nice. It really is. You know, it gives me hope for weathery fucking magical musketeers and shit like that later on down the road. But because of these things, you know, if you give Cyberdark support five and a half years later, obviously price spikes are going to occur. People are going to get angry because there's not enough reprints. It's, it's a double-edged sword. But for the most part... Most people, they pretend like they're happy that these things happen. And I mean, I'm one of those people that avidly support uh, just getting old legacy support. But for the most part, when you're designing these, they always have the intent to be more casual than competitive. Which, of course, is meant to be the mentality because, you know, little Zane Shrewsdale 2.0 over here wanting to play Cyberdarks in his Cyber Dragon deck because he watched the anime... He's probably not going to be playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! Because he's either middle school or high school. That That's a thing. We understand that. But at the end of the day, he's still going to go to Walmart and buy packs. Or he's going to go to Locals and buy them. Or Toys R Us before Toys R Us closes. There are a lot of things to genuinely take into consideration. You know, unfortunately, Yu-Gi-Oh! isn't designed with the intent for us older players. But... You know, we are spending the most money on this game. Let's be absolutely real here. So, there is that. The more casual stuff is designed for the more fun side of the game. It's often be cheaper. That's why you often will get common reprints of stuff. Which doesn't bother me. And then, meanwhile, everybody that's a grown man is buying out the expensive cards. And we're all complaining to each other on the internet. Because that is exactly how it works. <laughs> Somebody's going to be like, wow... DJ Robbie's never actually lied about that. There's never been a more accurate description. But, but, the way Konami does these duelist packs, they need to start supporting more of our boy Yugi. I, I wonder how many, how many Blue Eyes cards Konami can continue to make. It, I mean, I get it. It's free annual money. You know, like I said, but at some point, the wellspring has to dry up, right? Right? I, I guess I could be wrong. Yu-Gi-Oh's been going this long. If, if something doesn't work, just fire somebody else and bring in another ideal expert. 
you know, that's kind of how it works, but the wellspring of knowledge, it, it can only go for so long, but speaking of the wellspring, what the fuck's my Noble Knight support? You guys, you guys know how to make Noble Knights tier one, you just have to give them stuff, summon a warrior, equip a spell cast, or a sword from your deck to it. You know, that's literally all we need, just make it a normal spell guard. Or pay a 500 life points, I'll take that. So, but it's never gonna happen. But that's all I have for this video, guys. Thanks for listening to the radio sensations of DJ Robbie on his way to go get video files to upload onto the Gauntlet channel. Or you can watch a bunch of my local players. I have no idea what the fuck they're doing, and people will complain about it. But it's a local tournament, so people don't understand. Misplaced happen because everybody's gotta be perfect. Remember, DJ Chicken Nugget, tune in the fuck out. Peace.